No, you're fine. I'm just wrapping up a little video video shoot here. I'll get right out of your way. Right. Here, yeah, you can come on through. Have a great day. Have fun. I'm doing a little video shoot for YouTube with running shoes. And welcome back to the studio. Oh man, just some beautiful shots out there at Red Rocks today. Filming the running shoes for you, specifically the trail running shoes. And over the next 10 minutes, if you wanna go more in depth into the specs on these trail running shoes, click on the card that will pop out upper right hand corner. You will see them there. And yes, hot topic, what is trail running? So I was thinking about this today, like wow, road running is actually pretty simple. Uh, when you think about it, why the surface is for the most part all the same. Now I realize there's concrete, there's pavement that has potholes. Sometimes you might be running over some uh, cobblestone streets if you're running in like an old downtown area. But for the most part, road running is the same surface. But in trail running, the <laughs> diversity of options for different types of trails is just vast very vast because the and this is number one the dirt that we run on is different literally in every country around the world uh and i don't i'm not a scientist but there's just different types of dirt whether it's sandy whether it's rocky whether it has pebbles whether it has some vegetation grown into it etc etc uh or maybe it's just straight rock like just a rock slab like you see in moab utah uh, and then number two, uh, the climate. Is it a really moist climate, a lot of rain, a lot of snow, a lot of sleet, whatever the case may be, which obviously impacts the how sandy it is or how muddy it'll be. And then number three, the vertical that you have to deal with. So how is it steep uphill mountains? Is it rolling hills? Which I personally think is some more, some of the hardest running is like rolling. I'd almost prefer to just go straight up a mountain versus rolling. All right, here we go. And we could talk all night, but I'm gonna simplify this down as best as possible. What is the number one factor that I'm looking for in a daily trail running shoe? You might think it's the outsole, the traction, right? No, that is a very tempting answer to give you. But if I had to narrow it down to one factor, this is it. Oh man, which one should I grab here? I'm gonna go, well, you know what? I'll go with the Wild Horse 5. The lockdown feel that I can get through the collar of the trail shoe and the top of the tongue. Why do I say that over, let's say, the traction or the midsole or the, the rest of the upper? I personally am all about uphill running. That's what I love, love to do. And therefore, I am putting a ton of torque onto my ankle, onto my Achilles tendon when I'm running up these steep mountains, up these steep trails, uh, racing up steep mountains. And that torque, you got to be careful because it, it can take a toll on your body if you're not, if and especially your Achilles tendon, if you don't work up to it and not build the strength in your Achilles tendon. And therefore, I think a running shoe that can lock around my ankle really well to help with, and again, not a scientist, but to help with the physics, the physics of keeping my Achilles tendon locked into that shoe so I can propel myself up that mountain without any slipping in the heel, definitely no slipping in the heel. That is the number one factor I look for in a trail running shoe. Now listen, you might be, you might live near trails that are not as steep. So that might not be at the top of your list. But for me, that's personally how I approach purchasing my trail running shoes is how well does it hug my ankle and keep my, my heel from slipping? Absolutely, like that is not an option. You cannot let that happen. If you're in a trail shoe, if you're going to a running shoe store, make sure you, you grill the running shoe rep on the floor and, may, and have him test is this shoe going to slip off of my heel? If that's the case, don't buy it. And whereas in a road shoe experience, I'm actually looking for not heel slipping, but I'm looking for a little more nimbleness and I don't want my ankle to be too locked down. Uh, I want my ankle to be able to flex more because I'm trying to, it's, it's just a, it's a different foot strike on the roads compared to the trails um, where I'm, I'm uh, you're almost reaching with your toes so you can toe off. It's anyway, it, I won't get into that now, but it's just a different uh, approach when it comes to the roads. 
Now I cannot talk about all 10 pairs of trail running shoes that I own. I'll break down three for you, but I do wanna list them all so that if you do have a question specifically about one of these, you can ask down below in the comments. And here's those 10 shoes. The Nike Pegasus 36 Trail, the Nike Wild Horse 5, the Solomon Speed Cross 4, the Solomon Speed Cross 5, the Solomon S-Lab Speed Cross, the Solomon S-Lab XA Alpine, the Innovate Mud Claw G260, the Innovate Arctic Claw 300, the La Sportiva Tempesta GTX, and the Ultra Timp 1.5, which by the way, I have not run in that yet. It is next in the lineup to get out on the trails sooner rather than later. Since this is a brand new shoe from Nike, let's pick one of the 10, the Nike Pegasus 36 Trail. Break it down for you real quick. Again, if you need more specs on the shoe, upper right hand corner, go check it out. I'll just briefly mention a couple things. I think this shoe would be perfect if you live in an urban environment, but you want to uh, commute to the trails. So if you have a 10, 20 minute run to get to the trails, then you go do an hour on the trails and then a 10 to 20 minute run back to your house. This would be perfect transitioning from the dirt to the pavement. So far in this PEG 36 trail, very comfortable. And a lot of people are asking me to compare the PEG 36 trail to the Wild Horse 5. And I will just say this, I like the Wild Horse 5 uh, lockdown and feel better than the PEG 36 trail. So how it feels through the upper, this feels more comfortable to me in the Wild Horse 5. However, the PEG 36 trail so far is providing more cushion through the midsole, all right? So if cushion is more important to you, uh, I would go with the PEG 36 trail. If you want a little more of a nicer, a uh, little more snug lockdown feel, I'm picking up more lockdown in the Wild Horse 5. Okay, running trail running shoe number two to talk about. Oh, my favorite, oh my goodness, the Solomon Speed Cross 5. Remember we were just talking about torque and like, right, torque, I don't really understand torque in pickup trucks uh, as far as the mechanics behind it, but I feel when I'm out on the trails, cranking uphill, serious, just uphill vertical gain, you know, we're talking a thousand feet in a mile or a uh, thousand feet in, um, in two miles. This is my go-to shoe. Why? It allows my ankles and my Achilles tendon to create torque to get up the mountain without beating up my legs too, too much, and specifically my lower legs right where it connects to my foot. Why? This collar is just unmatched, in my opinion, and it has a 10 millimeter drop from heel to toe, and so it just lifts my heel off the ground just enough to provide, again, that extra support so that my foot is not dropping down too low when cranking up those mountains. So Solomon Speed Cross 5, my favorite trail running shoe for uphill running, daily training, not a racing shoe. We'll talk about that in a couple days, but as far as daily trainer, this is my go-to. I love it, I love it. I lo it is a little heavy. I will just mention that. If you, need a if you like lightweight trail shoes, this is probably not for you. Oh, and I like that red too, nice and bold. And last but not least, kind of an outlier of a, of a trail running shoe, but why not? Let's discuss the Innovate Mudclaw G260, a graphene outsole, which is supposed to be one of the toughest outsoles in the world, like in the entire trail running marketplace. I have not even put 50 miles into this shoe. I'm working on it, but this shoe is made for the mud, made for the bog made for uh, not even like high alpine running, that would be more the Speed Cross 5. The outsole on this Innovate Mud Claw is the most aggressive outsole I have ever seen on a trail running shoe. And what do I mean by aggressive? The lug depth, that's right. Don't quote me, I'll try and find it. I believe it's an eight millimeter lug depth uh, through this outsole. I'll try and find it and post it now. And I don't know, maybe you live like somewhere, for some reason I picture the Appalachian Trail being kind of muddy, or I don't know, maybe somewhere in Michigan, like where is there mud in the United States and you just need a shoe that can attack the mud. I know there's parts of the UK that are very muddy. Anyway, this is the shoe for you. And I, I am so excited to put more time into the shoe. And actually it's been really rainy here in Colorado these past uh, couple days. So oh, I'm dying 
dying to get out there in the mud and put this through the paces to see how it does. Uh, if you're looking for a shoe for muddy conditions, this is the trail running shoe for you. Okay, and you may have noticed like, wait a minute, where's Hoka? Hoka is a pretty well-known trail running shoe company, and I would agree with that. I'm leaning a little more toward ground contact feel these days versus uh, a lot of cushion. But listen, I can see the point of wearing Hoka for some bigger days, like 25, 30, 35 mile training days when you're getting ready for long, long uh, ultra running. Right now, I'm not quite in that boat. I'll probably re, uh, rediscover Hoka for trail running at some point. I've got the Hoka Speed Go 3s on my radar for sure. But right now, I'm just not um in love with hoka and maybe down the road i will reapproach for trail running all right question of the day here we go what is your daily trainer for this summer trail running season 2019 and i realize everyone in the southern hemisphere you're kind of transitioning to winter but let us know as well what you will be running in this winter if you're in the southern hemisphere for the trail specifically i'd appreciate it let us and let us know why so if you you know and i i like for example i've got my eye on the brooks cascadia 14 i just haven't been able to quite get it yet but um anyway that'll be down the road all right that does it for trail running shoes part one i hope you learned something i know we could talk all night about trail running shoes but i will stop there and call it a day and by the way i will give you an update tomorrow on my foot all right sound good see beauty Work hard and love each other. Now go hit those trails.